so sorry that it took a while to make this video. This took longer than expected overall. Um, this is the second part of the auto turrets. So if you ha if this is your first time seeing these videos, go watch my other videos first for context. Otherwise, none of this is gonna make sense unless you are already very good at building. This is kind of a more advanced piece of tech that I think I have discovered, and this is just more videos of that. Now, so for the first thing that I have created and I would like to show off for this video is this. Uh, so I finally actually optimized and made a decently working anti-air gun. Uh, be sadly, because I can, don't have any friends that play trail makers. It's really hard to get test footage, but it has manual control for the initial lock. Past that, it's just two axes of the same thing that you've seen before. So I would like to say a special thanks to uh, someone who goes by the name of, I believe, Disco Beast. They, so, because, again, I don't have any other friends that play Trail Makers, I am exclusively getting this combat footage from public servers, which is something that I'll try to add more in my videos, actual footage of the things working as intended. Um, a special thanks to him, he, we were in, because I couldn't get some actual footage of my original working, I gave him a copy to mess around with and so that he could test it on me. He Now, this brings me into the topic of using friction instead of air resistance. His concept was to just, instead of using so many fins, use friction by turning up the force on the servos. One, servos wouldn't work, which, because they keep snapping back to a forward position, while something like helicopter engines don't have a set forward position. And what that allows is basically, so servos can still be useful. If you want to say mount an auto, an auto turret onto a plane, you want it to always default to facing forward without adding any air resistance, it does have a use. So do you just using helicopter engines and using friction instead of air resistance. Again, all that, all that changes is the point of reference from the world's rotation to, to the ship's rotation. They all have a point and they're all slightly different. Here, uh, you should be able to see footage of the anti-air turret working in a little bit, hopefully. Uh, I am aware that this is, again, this is not a very good demonstration of the product. Mine is slightly better tuned, but honestly, only slightly. You can only get these things to be so accurate, and I only have so many hours in the day. So, yeah, that's about it for the anti-air version. And the anti-error version also, I would like to mention for anybody trying to copy it, the balance is very important. And also because of the way that the turret is configured, you can't aim a turret directly up. Well, rather you can, but something flying directly over it because it can't it won't be able to accurately target something that's directly overhead. Uh, this turret configuration, the way that the axes of rotation are pointed, it's best to have something flying in from like the side or an angle. Uh, and past that, it's just a lot of tuning. And here you can see some footage of the anti-aircraft gun actually working and getting quite close. So again, with tuning, it's possible. And that's it for this section. Now, for this next one, uh, I wanted to try something. So I had heard that certain objects, certain objects made by the object spawner could stop bullets. And because 
some of the words that I was using to not advertise, but to describe some of my other auditor versions are a CWIS system. And the whole point of a CWIS system is to be able to shoot down other projectiles. I wanted to see how close I can get to shooting other bullets out of the air and shooting rockets and artillery out of the air. So this was the test for that. Now with this, uh, I will go through every single, this is test footage for every single uh, interaction. I will go through both bullets and explosive cannon shots. For the beach ball, they do not pop under normal bullets. They are, however, incredibly light and can get knocked around. And they also have a decent amount of air resistance. They also look kind of ugly. So like if you're doing any professional type of build, would not recommend it. They also have a maximum count of three, which is also not particularly high. Uh, and especially when you're trying to shoot out the amount of projectiles that you are, three is often not enough, even if they are worth the one power core. Now for the snowballs, first of all, I would like to say that they obviously look a little bit cleaner. Uh, however, some interesting properties of the snowball that I've noticed is it's the only thing that you can spawn an infinite amount of at least a lot of, and it also breaks on contact. So what this means is you can have a massive amount of these turrets and not have to worry about uh, the, them canceling each other out because you can't, because there being a limit. They do get shot out by bullets. However, they do soak up one bullet. So, with a high enough amount of them, it would totally be possible to simply entirely stop a barrage. Also, because they get destroyed by bullets, a big problem from this type of system is the chance of it getting knocked back into the creation. For the concrete wall, we're skipping it. However, it is to be noted that with the piston acceleration, piston railgun, I think it's called, it might be possible to block bullets and with how broad it is, it might be the best option. Metal crates, all the box shaped items seem to have a maximum of five, which is a pretty good amount. They are also completely invulnerable to bullets and do not even take any form of knockback from them, which is again, really good because who knew that a 600 ton crate could deal damage to a vehicle. So if it lands on yourself from say the enemy pushing on the bullets, you would not need to worry about such a thing. Unlike the beach balls. So yes, simply a generally stable option. However, it does cost two power cords. Now for the next one, Dice have a couple of interesting properties. They're a lot like the snowball and they're a lot like the combination of a snowball and a crate. They're light. They, they get destroyed from bullets, at least a couple. It does take about three, I believe, three or five. And you can have about five of them like the crate. So, they have the worst parts of the snowball where they are super light, don't go far, and are ineffective. As well as the worst parts of the crate. So yeah, the, sorry for the cut. Um, so yeah, the dice have a combination of properties from the crate and the snowball and really are the worst of both worlds. Now here we begin testing on cannons and explosive rounds. 
it is important to note that the chance of getting a beast being's blocking cannons are low. The, and the chance of them being effective against cannons are low. We simply want to see whether or not if a cannon is used, it will actively make the creation even, like, okay, because I'm not expecting these to block cannons. Dice and snowballs, they get instantly destroyed. As can be seen, they get immediately vaporized, which is bad, but also they do not get sent flying back at yourself, which is good because it means that a strong enough explosion won't send them flying back, which is arguably a bigger problem than them just being destroyed. And again, here's more test footage. Now, for the metal crates, um, well, crates just seem to be generally the most effective option, and with them being worth twice the cost, I would expect that. Obviously, different options might be better under different circumstances, but typically, cr metal crates are what you want to go for. Can't be destroyed by explosions, really stable, nice and weighty, they spawn five at a time, which is a good enough amount for uh, a defense system to function by, and is just generally a good option. Snowballs, again, because dice share features from snowballs, you could probably already guess how this is going to go. They get detonated. And here's, of course, the test footage. I am not the smartest, so just moving stuff around. It may take me a couple of attempts, but yes. Now it is important to note that depending on the scale of your creation, you may still want to use snowballs. Snowballs, seeing as they have no limit on the amount of them, might still be the best option if you're building, say, a super battleship and you need to have 16 of these were something utterly insane. Um, beach balls? There, again, beach balls seem to be the worst option in almost every single regard. They have some of the lowest quantities, just generally bad at everything they do, and look ugly. I see no point in them. But then again, they're also the lightest and can bounce the most, so I'm sure there's some type of odd interaction that they're still useful for. for. Concrete walls, if you can get them to spawn and launch so that the broad side, the broad area of the wall is what gets hit by the bullets, it could potentially be the most effective. And that is it for this section. Now for the demonstration. Now, again, I would like to say a special thanks to Disco Beast for helping me get some of the test footage. This is the test footage for the finalized model. Uh, I Now, it is important to note that the guns do impact the metal crates, which is why I tried to use snowballs initially, but then they failed because shooting itself and putting it on prongs facing outwards with the auto aiming and error margin, it still did not work too well. However, metal crates, yeah, as can be seen, it's stopping a full minigun. It is important to note that this is, again, only an early model and it's just a quick test platform, which I reused from a different earlier version of the auto turrets. Okay, and for the final thing, this is potentially, if it can be properly optimized, the most impactful thing that I have made. Giving cannons auto-aiming, if done right, and this is obviously over-exaggerated with the amount of fins it needs, and 
If it's done right, it could be absolutely devastating. However, I did not do it right and cannot seem to do it because of Trailmaker's physics. I have two mini thrusters at the back. By the way, the yellow designates upwards and can be and has helicopter servos so I can still direct it for the initial lock. It uses piston acceleration on a cannon, pretty basic design, two sets of pistons. I have a mini thruster set on the back to counteract the cannon going forward, shifting the center of mass forward and therefore tipping down. Or at least it would. However, that's the logical concept. However, sometimes it tilts up, sometimes it tilts down. I do not control it and I do not understand why. At this point, I can only add more guns and balance it correctly and hope that the guns simply apply more of a correcting force. Because of this, you can see how it misses many shots. However, when it does get steady and get into a good rhythm, you can see it consistently hitting multiple shots in a row. If this is properly mounted, properly optimized, and properly done, it has a lot of potential. However, that's a very big if statement. Again, I do not have enough time in the day to properly and adequately test all these things, which is why this video came out so late. I've, expect, I've been going to put this out for like yesterday or before yesterday, but it is what it is. That's about it for the video. If you would, I mean, don't subscribe. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I keep getting subscribers and I don't understand why my recording schedule is gonna be as horrible as it is now, probably gonna be getting worse as time goes on. And yeah, um, questions go in the comments, I guess. I'll put links. Oh, I remembered what I wanted to say. So apparently, because I'm a new YouTube channel, I am not allowed to post any um, links to anything, which means I can't link my creations. However, the vast majority are, of them are literally named auto, space, turret, space, and then just seven, or like eight, or like six, and they all go in order, no caps and the number is not spelled out, it's literally the number key. So if you want to find them, find them like that. Uh, the drone thing in the first video is literally called a drone, and my Steam, my public Steam name thing is Worm, W-E-R-M, you probably saw it in the clips. Uh, and then there's torpedo, tracking torpedo question mark, and just tracking torpedo for the other two creations I've shown before. Next video should be about missiles, hopefully, assuming I stay on track, which is unlikely. And that should be it. Thanks for watching, I guess.